If you're a landscape photographer who uses filters like me, you've probably run into this problem. Look at this image where the top part of the large rock on the left has turned black. I used a filter to darken the sky, but I couldn't avoid it also darkening the rock. Here's another example that isn't quite as obvious, but it still ruins the image. In this shot, I used the same filter and it's darkened the top part of the rocks again. One way to avoid this problem is to shoot without a filter and to capture multiple exposures. But if you don't want to bother with all that messing and you still want to use filters, there is an alternative I want to share. It's an easy fix to problems like this using Lightroom's Select Objects tool. Let me show you by fixing the first example I shared. I'm using Lightroom 13.1 for this, but the Select Objects tool was added to version 12 back in 2020. It's found in the Masking and Selection tools in the Lightroom Develop module. You can access these by clicking the masking icon below the histogram. It looks like a grey circle with a dotted edge. Clicking the icon displays the available tools we can use to select part of our image for editing. Along the top are the Subject, Sky and Background tools. Then below this we have the Select Objects option. When I click that, Lightroom adds a new mask to the image. We also see two select object modes we can use to produce the mask. The first is the paintbrush, which is best for irregularly shaped objects. Then, next to this, we have an area selection mode. Let's click that to use it first. I'll show you the paintbrush mode a little later in the video. To select the rocks in this image, I'll position my mouse to one corner. Then, I can click and drag out a rectangular shape around the rock. The Area Selection mode is good for this because I can select all of the rocks inside the rectangle. This makes it quicker than the Paintbrush mode, where I would need to paint a large selection around all the rocks. Lightroom then uses AI Processing to identify and select the object within the area when I release the mouse button. We then see a new mask that's been produced in the Masks panel, and also a red overlay covering the rocks that we selected. At first glance, the Select Objects tool appears to have done a great job of selecting the rocks. But let's magnify the area to 200% because there's a problem I want to highlight. Notice the selection has a soft edge that spills over and into the sky. This is something you see with most AI-based selection tools because it's to help blend adjustments into the image. But that's something that we don't want with this selection. Let me illustrate why by zooming out and then applying an exposure adjustment to lighten the rocks. As I increase the exposure slider, you can see the rocks becoming lighter. But notice there's now a halo appearing around the edge of the rocks in the dark sky. Fortunately, there is an easy way for us to fix this problem. All we need to do is subtract a sky selection from this mask. I'll reset the adjustment first by double-clicking the exposure slider. This returns it to its default, and then we see the red overlay again. If we look at the Masks panel, you can see there is an Add and Subtract button below the mask. When I click the Subtract button, I then see the same selection tools that we saw earlier. Let's choose the Sky selection, which also uses AI, but to select the sky. This then subtracts the sky selection from the mask, which cleans up the feathered edge along the rock. In fact, the sky selection suffers from the same problem as the Select Objects tool, in that it produces a soft edge. But that's fine as the feather is on the edge of the rocks and it blends into the adjustment nicely. Let's magnify the area to 200% again, and you can see the selection now appears accurate. If I press Command and Z to undo the sky selection, you can see how much of an improvement this really produced. Let's redo the sky selection now, and then zoom out to show the entire image. Now when I increase the exposure slider, it lightens only the dark rocks. It's then possible to blend the adjustments into the image so they look very natural. But there is still a problem with this image. The top part of the rock is still much darker than the bottom, so it still appears too dark in the image. Let's fix that now by using the Select Object tool, but in the Brush mode. First I'll click the Create New Mask icon at the top of the Mask panel. I can then choose the Select Object tool to create the mask. 
I'll then pick the paintbrush mode so that you can see how that works. In this mode, the only control we have is a size slider to make the brush larger or smaller. You can also do the same thing using the square brackets on your keyboard, which is what I prefer. The right square bracket makes the brush larger and the left square bracket makes it smaller. I can then click and paint over the rocks I want to select whilst holding down my mouse button. This turns the areas I paint over red so you can see what's going to be evaluated by the selection tool. When I've finished painting, I release the mouse button and Lightroom selects the rock. Now it's possible that the Select Objects tool won't select everything in a single brush stroke. If that happens, just use the Add button below the mask in the Masks panel. You can then choose the Select Objects tool again, allowing you to add a new area to the mask. Just paint over any missing rocks to add them. The two selections are then combined into a single mask with a single set of adjustment controls. Now that I have the dark rocks selected, I still need to clean up the edge. As before, I'll click the Subtract icon and choose the Sky option. If you look under the Mask in the Masks panel, you can see all the different selections that are combined to produce the overall mask. I can then increase the Exposure slider to lighten the rocks. I can also use the Shadows and Clarity adjustment to make the rock detail a little easier to see. And when using multiple adjustment controls on the same mask like this, don't forget you can control the overall strength using the Amount slider. This allows me to fine-tune the strength of the adjustment for both masks to balance the effect on the image. If we compare the adjustments with the original RAW image, you can see the difference they've made. Even when we magnify that part of the image to 100%, you can see the accuracy of the correction. If you want to learn more about Lightroom selection tools, see my book on the subject. I'll include a link to it in the YouTube video information below. You might also be interested in this next video where I use the selection tools to produce a dramatic lighting effect. Thanks for watching today and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.